Greetings, this is Neurosciences Connections and I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of the Department of Neurosciences at UCSD. Uh, I'm here today with David Croteau, a new member of the faculty and uh, a person with uh, a great deal of interest and uh, energy and many insights into the biology of a, a changing uh, condition, a condition that uh, comes with the ability to treat one of the neurological disorders associated with HIV and with HIV itself. So, David, welcome to UCSD. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing here at UCSD that distinguishes you and, and, uh, and the department. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, my, my uh, medical background is somewhat convoluted, so I'll, uh, but I think it comes full circle in the end. So I did uh, part of my uh, medical training in Canada. Uh, including medical school and the, my uh, neurology residency training at the McGill uh, University. And although I had some interest in infectious diseases in uh, medical school uh, from doing uh, summer projects, th th actually three consecutive uh, summer projects in the microbiology lab on Toxoplasma gondii, which was once a, a very common opportunistic infection in the HIV-infected individuals. Uh, my interest shifted a little later on to oncology and, and then neurology, so that's why I ended up doing a residency in the, uh, neurology and after that a clinical uh, fellowship in uh, neuro-oncology at uh, Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. And during that fellowship, I uh, developed new interest in uh, neuroimaging, uh, neuropharmacology clinical trials, and uh, intracerebral uh, drug delivery techniques which led me to spend a few months at the NIH uh, studying uh, uh, specific uh, intracerebral drug delivery technique. Uh, and uh, because of that uh, research fellowship at the NIH, I ended up uh, spending a few years in the pharmaceutical uh, industry uh, working for a small biotech company who had a few uh, clinical trials using that same uh, del intracerebral delivery technique I studied at the uh, NIH. Uh, and I recently completed a, an HIV uh, neurology fellowship uh, at, uh, here at UCSD with the uh, HIV Neurobehavioral Research uh, uh, Center, and I recently took a position at, uh, with the Department of Neurosciences, uh, still working with the same group at uh, uh, the HIV Neurobehavioral uh, uh, Research uh, Center. And it's, it's, a, it's a great environment to uh, work in. Uh, it's, this, this program is very well uh, developed and uh, very well known uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, there's essentially two component to that uh, uh, program. A clinical component, uh, which was uh, built by Dr. my colleague Dr. Ron uh, Ellis, who uh, who's built a very uh, good and strong relationships with the uh, the uh, Owen Clinic uh, at UCSD, one of the major uh, HIV care uh, provider group in the San Diego uh, area, and as well as with uh, uh, community HIV care providers. So, uh, so we do uh, see. Um, um, quite a few patients with uh, HIV and neurological disorders, either related or unrelated to their HIV infections. And there's, there's the uh, research component of the uh, program, uh, which uh, takes place at the uh, HIV Neurobehavioral Research Center, uh, with some overlap with the Antiviral Research uh, Center. And within the uh, HNRC, uh, there's different cores, uh, the uh, neuromedical cores, which I'm part of, focusing on neurological complications of uh, HIV, neurobehavioral uh, core, uh, focusing on the uh, cognitive aspect of uh, HIV infections, neuroimaging uh, core, and neurobiology core, which includes neuropathology. So those cores uh, provide uh, uh, very good uh, um, uh, resources uh, mm -hmm. to conduct uh, a, wa a pretty wide variety of research projects. And so HIV is changing now. Now that we have effective medicines, it's gone from being um, an early killer of those that are infected to a disease that's quite chronic. What are we learning about HIV and those that have been infected for long periods of time? 
Absolutely. Uh, as you know, t 2011 marks the 30th anniversary of the beginning of the uh, epidemic uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, since the advent of highly active antiretroviral uh, therapy in the mid-1990s, uh, uh, HIV-infected individuals live uh, much, much longer, almost a normal uh, life uh, span. Um, so those individuals infected in the 1980s and 1990s who survived and are now on uh, heart uh, are getting into their 50s and uh, 60s and uh, uh, start uh, developing a number of disorders that are common with uh, normal aging, but also common in HIV. And examples of those disorders include uh, uh, metabolic syndrome components, uh, which include high blood pressure, uh, mm -hmm. glucose intolerance or diabetes mellitus, uh, uh, increased uh, cholesterol uh, and obesity, for instance. And uh, another uh, 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 group of disorders that is more common with aging and HIV is uh, you know, degenerative uh, disorders, uh, such as uh, dementia and cognitive impairment. So um, since those individuals uh, have HIV and are aging, uh, I think we can anticipate that uh, there will be at least an additive effect, if not synergistic effect, on, on those disorders. So this is your area of special interest, as I understand it. That's correct. So uh, at, at this moment, I have a uh, study uh, looking at early atherosclerotic changes in uh, extracranial and intracranial vessels, so uh, arteries uh, feeding the, the brain essentially. And uh, we uh, used ultrasound-based techniques which are not uh, used for diagnostic purposes, but uh, I think are much more sensitive for those uh, early uh, changes. And the general hypothesis is that HIV itself and its treatment uh, may accelerate those um, uh, atherosclerotic uh, changes. So there's lots to learn. We're glad you're with us. And we're glad that you've tuned in to this episode of Neurosciences Connections. Thank you.